put as as they're really good at. They can put the whole package together, get a bid out. That that's a time savings for Brad, so that he can keep moving with all the other projects. Okay, so but but Bill is two eleven, correct? Bill is not two eleven. Bill uh, nice. Victor is two eleven. Vic Victor. Which Bill, Bill Victor is, is two eleven. Uh, we ought to put names with them. Well, it's Victor's, hard to keep Victor's up with who's who's who. Victor's two eleven. Okay. Peter's two thirteen. Um, Maryland's two two three eleven. If I if I just could interject, I, I'm Victor Benny, the town oh, engineer. Oh, I know. Um, <laughs> it's just well, hard to keep the track of who's it, who's on what side of uh, these first. numbers. Oh, okay, yeah. and and I just wanted to add one more point. This past year, we also worked at uh, Shore Road and Manwaring Road with the replacing the water line out there. Yeah. Peter did an impeccable job on both the survey, the field condition, existing survey work out there. He's pretty much learned that whole outside field uh, surveying system within the past year. He did the specifications, which he does a great job on, the design plans, and then also involved with the you know follow-up to anything. When the contractor has any questions, he's answering them right through the, the whole bid process and, constru and construction process. Thank you, Thank Thank you Victor. To, 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 an to answer Rob's question, um, Bill Shear is in 317. Two budget 317? Two budget. He's in the highway budget. He's in the highway budget, right? right? He's huh. in 211 of huh. the highway budget, and we can talk about that then. He's. Um, I'm sorry. I just thought he was under town engineer because that's what I thought he was where doing. He started. Yeah. He, he's not, yeah, Victor's the town engineer. Yeah. Well, I'm, yeah. that's why I'm <laughs> yep. asking the question. Yep. Who's the engineer inspector? Uh, that's Gary. Gary Hyenka. Gary's been here many years. Um, he's the one that was out there when um, Gateway was um, building East Society. He does any of the inspections out there when the pavement, all the pavement jobs are going on. Um, That's, on Gary. Site That's Gary. Gary. And then in the wintertime, he's doing all the advanced stuff of trying to scout out all the pavement jobs, all the drainage jobs, things like that. Well, that might go away. Yeah. I'm pulling one. All right. All right. Next, thank, next thank budget, then. Is which one you want to do next? IT? What's what? Info Technology 109. 109. That's an easy one. And it isn't. Again, it's another budget that's sitting flat, except for the um, salary increase. But one thing of note, just I'd like to talk about, is the maintenance of office equipment. Um, it was a big um, step last year to this current fiscal year, mm. and we went to that um, contract with Star Star Equipment, a local local vendor, and um, it's been an excellent um, thing for the town right now. Um, they we just have Carmen Ames, and then Bill helps out with uh, IT. That's it. The PD relies on us. Um, town government relies. Everyone relies on those two people. And more so, Bill's doing other things to, to, to do all to run all the IT stuff. So we needed a, an, a vendor to come in and clean everything up and make sure everything worked. You know, if, if you got the um, if you got the virus at um, the PD that cripples their computers, which happened last week, or if you have all these things that go on, you need you need a go-to person to call up to get there and fix it. And um, it's been very successful. We've been. Uh, We've been working on it and uh, keeping track of those hours, and um, that forty thousand two seventy two we have broken down to the to the dollar of how that divvied up between the website, between Star, between antivirus software, and uh, we meet with Carmen Ames. We try to meet with her once every week, but once a month we go over everything she's spending just to make sure she does. She, we keep on course to keep the IT running and keep keep us in business money wise. So as far as you're concerned, this has been a good investment in terms of the maintenance contract? Absolutely. It's, it's done wonders. To, um, I mean, up till now, um, in that contract, I would say about 45% of the time has been used on the PD. And, and it's more just because no one really has had the chance to help them over there. Now that their servers are stable, their computers are stable, um, everything is running smoothly. I meet with the PD once a month. They're in a much better place. Now we can start migrating to the servers down, downstairs in town hall. And uh, everything's in a better situation, uh, backups, all the servers, because of this contract, because we can call in a vendor. And when things go wrong, or they, they have the knowledge set that and staying on top of these things to keep everything running smooth. What's the age 
of our information technology equipment? And do we own or do we lease? We, um, yeah. Bill has been doing this for okay. years, so let me okay. let him go. Right. Uh, we try to maintain our computer inventory of five years or less, the com desktop computers. I have a detailed inventory of every computer that we own right here. And this is the first year we're actually on top of it. I've been okay. have giving the same speech now for 10 years, I believe. When we started, we had computers that were 15 years old. Um, so right now, our, our top of the list here, they're, they're, they're five years old. Okay. So we're right on top okay. of our list. Now, in, our capital request this year is 12000 I believe. Something like that. We asked for just a little bit more than normal because we, we have nine servers. It's 15. 15. I'm, I'm sorry. We have nine servers. Um, and those are, we try to keep those. Industry standard is three years for a desktop, five years for a server. We go five years for a desktop, seven years for a server, just because we can extend things a little bit longer. We're government. We have to pinch pennies. Yeah. And all of our servers right now are coming up on six years old. So we've been, because STAR is on board now, uh, servers are very complicated. It's not just a desktop, a very complicated piece of equipment. Before, we were fighting fires rather than doing preventative maintenance. So now that STAR has really gone through the PD and got them straightened out, now they're in our building, straightening out our servers. So as they become familiar and accustomed and, and very into our system, we're going to be working with them to come up with a server replacement plan. Also, it's not only the servers, but also the software has to be upgraded. We have two servers on um, um, on 2003 packages, and the rest of them are on 2008 packages on, in software. So we need to bring those up to date. So with the extra capital that we've requested, STAR is going to come up with a plan so that we can bring these servers up to date slowly. Because of our computer, because our computers are up, getting up to date, we will only have to replace a certain amount, and the remainder of the money we're going to use towards server updates. Okay. H have we looked at leasing? I just I asked because I went to a CCM workshop on uh, you know municipal budgeting, and I think it was Bristol said they did a reverse auction um, with Dell, got an incredibly good price, and then you're not tied in, you're doing more frequent upgrades. I, I have talked to Dave Lewis at Star yeah. about these topics. Mm -hmm. I've also looked at remote hosting of mm -hmm. our email and and all of these items, and he said based on our size and number of clients we are better off owning and hosting our own okay. our, our own services So it might here. make more sense for a larger community to be looking Larger or smaller. smaller. Not, not we're, we're right in the wrong spot right. or the right spot? Right. Or? Things are changing so quickly, though, the answer to that question could be completely different in three years. Right, okay. I we, just want to make sure we're looking at all of our options to ensure, should. one, that we're getting the best technology we can afford at the best possible price. That's that's my job. Okay. I, I, I asked those specific okay. questions. Right. As a matter of fact, it was two weeks ago I asked Dave about hosting our email, and he said, you're in the sweet spot where it's not worth it for you to go anywhere but here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that's for the town government computers, not school computers? We do, we're not connected with the school computer department. Okay. But I wonder if that would change if, if we did partner up with the schools. The, the one issue with partnering yeah. with the schools in terms of purchases and stuff, the yeah. schools have different deals that we mm -hmm. cannot capitalize upon. Mm -hmm. They buy software. They mm -hmm. have educational rates. We cannot, use, we cannot buy stuff with educational rates. So we can't buy software with them. And we, we've looked at hardware, and it's never really worked that well. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we have looked at that numerous times, and it's never worked. So it, okay. Sorry. I, and I know we, this came up when we were looking into the STAR contract, and I'm hoping with a new superintendent and new business manager, you know, having a joint maintenance mm -hmm. contract IT in terms of IT, in terms of economy of scale, right. whether if we were the Board of Ed and us, whether STAR might, you know, we're always willing to entertain yeah. anything. We're yeah, flexible. I know we are. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Definitely looking forward to uh, some of those partnerships as the new administration comes in. And we'll be looking for this. I'm sure they'll be looking for the same thing. I hope so. Uh, any questions? Any further questions on Department 109? I'm glad that, that that worked out because I think that we spent a load of time on deliberating over over going out to have somebody else come in and, and it's worked out. So it's, it's the best perfect. thing we ever did, Rob. Yeah, that's it's awesome. Good. It's working out well. You, that's what you thought it would be. and Good decision. Awesome. Building um, one maintenance is 113. 113, yep. 
Um, just just some highlights of the budget. Um, this one is the bottom line is up 2.3 percent, but um, there are a few items that I want to speak on. One, um, 295 fire protection. Just so uh, that's been a common theme. It's been going up 10 percent a year. Um, I'm still showing at 10 percent a year, but just don't be surprised. There will probably be just some discussions in the next year of of that commission or a few members of that commission wanting to increase that amount, but that's for another day. Uh, this one's showing 10% increase. Um, it seems like a lot of an increase, but it's starting to try to get it back up to levels that it was years ago. Um, as far as <coughs> the telephones, I'd like to speak on that, 201. Um, I was at, in front of this commission, uh, this um, board, six months ago, and we were talking about the phones, and at the time, I was still getting up to speed with this line. Um, it's it's been funded at twenty one thousand two seventy five for the last few years. Um, if you if you notice the actual expense this last past fiscal year, it was twenty four thousand six seventy nine. What what happened is in the last few years the migration from regular phones to smartphones caused an increase in the plans, and then some people got their new phone, they got their new case, they got their new stuff. It got charged to this line, and that line was never increased. So I just am dealing with it as best as I can. I remember having a discussion with you with some yeah. of that. Yeah. So basically going forward, I'm showing it next year or proposing at 23,200. Now I just want the board to know that's not even without a lot of looking at every single plan that every single phone in town and making sure it's appropriate for that person. Working with Anna Johnson on that, uh, we've, been cr we've decreased um, about four months ago, we were paying for the general government phones about $720, $720 a month. And now I, we got that plan down to 570 So we cut the, about $150 a month. But, but um, the, pr the problem with cell phones these days is there's just a base, base amount that on a smartphone, it's about $45, $50. And that's the appropriate thing. So the problem is a lot of people had... Uh, we had insurance on a third of the phones, but not on the other two thirds. And then um, people had hot spots they had, but we, we got rid of all that. I actually got rid of the insurances because it didn't make a lot of sense to get insurance on a third of the phones because you figure that whenever there's a phone that goes bad, it's going to be on the third that they don't have insurance. So I basically <laughs> took the insurance off. And actually, I asked the person for Verizon, I says, isn't it better if we just take the insurance off and balance our um, upgrades? And he says, yeah, that's probably a good idea. So we took all the insurances off. That mm -hmm. saved about $1,200 a year. So this wasn't without a lot of work to try to get this down, and I'm still proposing a 23-2. I also removed, um, we'll get into this in 317, but I also removed two, three of the phones from the highway department and brought them over to the highway budget because I just think it's appropriate that the department should pay for their own cell phones. But if I did that to other people's budgets, I don't have control of their budgets, so I can't tell the planning department or the... Um, this department or the Parks and Rec Department because I don't control their budget. I control the highway department. So that's why you'll see the phones going up over there because I was trying to reduce this line. Um, so that line consists of the, the telephone and all the um, AT&T costs, uh, excuse me, frontier costs of town hall. The me there's just a little bit of Metrocast, the Verizon cell phones. And then instead of having the insurances, I'm carrying $1,000 for equipment for everyone. And we'll manage that if for some reason someone has a phone that does, something happens to and I don't have an upgrade, I have a little bit of wiggle room to get someone a phone if it's appropriate and they didn't lose it for an unworthy reason. So <laughs> that's, wow. that's where we're at with phones. Um, we appreciate your but effort. I, 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 I didn't want to belabor it except for the fact I feel very bad. I was in front of this board. Rob asked me the question, is this going to be a problem? And I said no at the time because at that time I didn't have, I didn't know how bad the problem was. So then as soon as we found it out, we Well, you worked. came to me and told me. I mean, yeah. you realized how it was out of whack. So, but so I mean, we're, yeah. we're on it. Done. There's no one that has any crazy phone, um, phone plans right now. Everyone's is appropriate um, for what they should be getting for what their employment is. Okay. Um, that's the phones, um, electricity. I put the three percent increase. I think, yeah, heating oil. Um, it's it's up we're up five five thousand. Um, what I was trying to do is last year was a very cold winter, but then the the winters passed. The the problem with that heating um, thing is two years ago we only spent about a hundred five thousand on heating, and then all of a sudden it went to one forty seven last year. 
Well, th there's two things that happened. One, it was a miserably cold winter, and the second is the field service building came on in line, and that line never went up. So we have a, what's the square footage there? 30,000 30, square foot building that we didn't account for the heat. So that's why that line went crazy. Now, last year we were spending $4 a gallon on fuel oil, which we should have never done, and then the propane costs were going through the roof. It was like $3 a gallon. Um, we locked in the prices this year with uh, Guy's Oil at, at, a, at the best rate that we could get around, and it happened to be a local contractor, so that was a win-win because mm -hmm. we, we got to give the business to a guy that, you know, has a business in town, but we weren't paying any. I checked with Waterford. We were paying less than that, and we were paying. So that was a win. We have contracts with Spicer. So, um, and also what I'm doing is I'm tracking the heat. There's a thing called heat days. So you can compare a winter to a winter. So you can have an index of two years ago. Last winter was 40% colder, and I can compare it to this winter so we can have a better guess of comparing winter to winter because the two things that change are how cold it is and how much you're paying for the fuel. The building's the same size, so that's mm -hmm. what's driving. So as I build this data in the future, I'll be able to better guesstimate this number, but this is now my second budget in, and I'm trying to peg this number, and it's got to come up a little bit. That's all I have on the um, maintenance time buildings. Everything Questions. else is flat. Um, three eleven custodians. I noticed it's only uh, 0 0.52 percent increase. That's is that? Are they union? Is that, is that why they're different? Yeah, everyone they're, else across the board. Yeah, you'll find different. this. Is, that's a common theme in all the salary lines. This is a contract year. Okay. So, so any increases are, are put in oh. a in. A, I don't even know where the line is, but any kind of guesstimated increases that the, are going to be negotiated in this contract are put somewhere else. Uh, because you can't put it here because it's not. Is that correct? When you saw the three percent increases, those yeah. are department heads. Yeah. Uh, the, the union wages in increases are found in a wage contingency. Okay. And we'll, we'll be bumping into that. I think. Department one twenty. I think we're reviewing that later on tonight. So I'll show you where we calculated all the union workers in town and and gave them a guesstimate. We don't know where the wages wound up. Okay. So that's where we bring it. Thanks. That way it's not sitting in a department in case yep. the wages only went up 2% and we gave them a 3% and then they could spend it. Okay. Uh, th this way we can control that. The, the finance director can tr control the money uh, and the flow, right? Am I getting it? It's week eight. I'm starting to, <laughs> the light's starting to turn on a little bit. Okay, thank you. This is Hardy. Can you? Ding, ding. Next budget. Public work. 317 is the biggest budget that um, comes under my uh, responsibility. And um, like the other ones, I'd like to just go a little over some of the highlights. Please. Um, the first line, just to answer a question before, but 211 consists of 100% Chuck Holyfield, the highway supervisor. Um, I want to make sure I get this right. 80% of my salary, because 10% goes to water, 10% goes to sewer, mm -hmm. the total of 20 goes to utilities. And it's it's misleading. It shouldn't say office manager because that's um, the deputy, the deputy director Bill Shear. 80% um, of his salary is um, is in this line, and 20% is complete is to the water department. He's not split 50-50 water, so he's split. He's completely 20% water. So that's what constitutes that line. The, um, again, the regular payrolls is flat because, or essentially flat. I'm not sure why it's 0.32, but it's because that, that contingency for any increases is, is in a contingency line. Um, there's a decrease in um, line 296, bulky waste trans, uh, transportation and tipping. That is actually the, um, the roll-offs that are at the tr um, transfer station that people dump their couch in and dump all the other stuff. You know, bring, people bring scrap metal, we get paid for that, although unfortunately the revenues for scrap have gone way down. But any of the other bulky waste things to get, and that's really a trivial, just, we're just not getting as many things that are getting dumped up at the um, transfer station. Um, so that's why we're bringing that back to a more realistic number. If you, if you notice, the actual expense in 2004 was 98900 We're seeing an uptick a little bit this year, but we certainly didn't have to carry 125000 to pay for that, pay for the cost of that, um, not only the transportation of the roll-offs, but of 
of the disposal. Um, 201, uh, 300, 201, the telephones. I ex explained to you that I'm bringing three phone. I'm bringing the two foreman's phones, and um, the portion of of the phone that I have is bringing over. That's in. Um, I just thought it was the right thing to do to bring the phones for the Public Works Department under Public Works and not under the building maintenance. It didn't make a lot of sense. We do have two lines of fuel tank repairs. So when, when we've ever had issues with the fuel tanks up at 12 Roxbury, we have no really place to, there's no real line to take it from. So we are identifying a line if there's issues with a spill bucket or if there's any kind of like, the, you know, a, a bus hits the dispenser and we have to get a new part or something like that. Or every time you call service station equipment out there, it, it costs money. So we were trying to identify a location to um, put it. The stormwater comp permit compliance I already talked about. The reason that stormwater materials and supplies is, is, seems like such a big increase is that that was just about the line I had last year, but there was additional town aid money that was given to us last year. So because we got that, they reduced that line. So that line is to purchase all the salt and then to purchase blades. So that's the appropriate amount. It just that the 90000 was because they cut it to, to be offset by the amount we were getting for Town Aid Road additional. Fleet fuel, we had significant decreases in the cost per gallon that were locked in for next year. So we were able to um, have a 21% you know, um, de decrease, which is a great thing to see. Great. And uh, that's basically a highlights of if you have any other questions. And Chuck Holyfield's here, too, if you have any other specific questions of the operation. On line 201, where you have the uh, explanation telephone, um, it's almost uh, almost a 100% increase. Uh, then if you go over to the far line, the, f the last column, it says minus 100%. Is that a typo? That, yeah. Did I do that? Okay. Yeah, that, that that's almost an increase of, and and um, yeah, that that's that's a, that's increase. a formula in the right. Excel. That nineteen hundred increase is for one smartphone, which is fifty dollars a month, six hundred. Another the foreman's phone, um, a portion of my phone, and we also have an iPad over there um, that has a service to it. So that's that's the total increase. I wasn't questioning the... Yeah, increase. the formula is correct. I noticed that too. Well, I beat you to the punch then. The, uh, <laughs> I always let you go first. Oh, thank so you. It's the right it's thing, thing to do. It's the gentlemanly <laughs> thing to do. Now, I also noted that um, under the store materials and supplies, there's a large increase there. Is that due to this winter, or have you found that you are... Uh, that you were really underfunded this year because it went from... 129 to 90 now you're up to 159 um, the actual um, the best explanation of is the 90,000 is not the proper amount but they the, the Board of Finance cut that last year because I got at, at after we went through this process last year it must have been February uh, March last year the state said that we were going to get an extra hundred eighty thousand dollars in town aid road so when they did that, it just dropped on my budget, 180,000. So they it were they took 50,000 out of that line. So that's why that line is going back, um, going back up. So. Um, and, and and the other thing is that last, typically we spend about 1,700. To, we get 1,700 tons of salt. Last year we got 3,000, but 1,700 was more like the average. Last year we had 3,000. Um, we're probably at 2,200 now, yeah. and you know, there's no salt left in the state of Connecticut, so we probably won't get much more. But um, so the other thing is, I was increasing the amount that we might have because you try to do running averages. So the 1,700 looked good until last year, so now we're at 22. So the average has kind of come up. So that's why it's up to one, uh, one, yeah, 159.6 because it's just allowing us to buy more salt. So before you, before this progresses to um, the Board of Finance, you probably want to have the exact figures of where you are now to show that the 90000 just really wasn't sufficient to cover the expenses. I can do that, but I'm actually can, 
after I spend the ninety thousand, I'm going to take all all the rest of the salt that we had to purchase, which is going to be another ninety thousand, is going to come out of Town Aid Road, out of the, the hundred and eighty extra that we got last year. We got extra money okay, last we year. Yeah, so. We did get we did get it. I well, look look at the last line, um, five hundred programs, uh, line two twenty four Town Aid Road. Mm -hmm. In actual expense in two thousand fourteen, it was one twenty six nine thirty eight. In this adopted budget, we had three hundred forty three thousand. That, so we got a lot more money in Town Aid Road, but that was dropped on us in like March or April after we went through this whole process. So the Board of Finance found a way to grab 50000 from somewhere and they took it from there, saying if, if you need the extra fifty, take it out of Town Aid Road. They swapped it. Right. Um, but my recollection was that we had not received the amount that we thought we were going to. We did receive the Town Aid. We did. Um, if you recall, at, um, at the end of last fiscal year, we did a special appropriation to bring the town, rate, uh, town road budget up to mm -hmm. um, the amount we were receiving from the state, the 300. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and um, actually, since we're discussing it now, um, we did, um, at this point, we have it um, in the budget back to the old amount of 162,000. But last week, when we received the projected revenues from the state, the state is saying at this point in time that they're still going to give us um, the amount we have in the current year's budget, the, um, the, the 343000 <laughs> However, we're really not sure what the state is going to do at this point in time. So this is still um, an up-in-the-air item. Okay, thanks. Real tough call. I mean, the governor's budget has uh, been proposed, but uh, there's a whole lot of talk about some some numbers moving around. So we'll go with our best guess at this point. Very prudent. Questions on this budget, this comprehensive budget? I just, just wanted to ask a question on the uh, 412 part time seasonal. Did we have part time seasonal last year? Uh, yes. How, how, how do you have a part time seasonal? Um, actually, what we did, we did, we, uh, we had a um, it was an um, engineering student. It's interesting because it was talked about before by an That's intern. That's exactly why I'm bringing it up. We had an engineering student that was fantastic who had worked in the past. Um, was he free one year? He was free one year, but this is, he's a senior at uh, Quinnipiac College and um, very smart, smart kid. And he came in last year and was able to do a lot of things um, for the department just in line with what you're saying with the intern, yep. uh, was very, a huge asset. Actually worked on the water and sewer side, doing a lot of some of their stuff. But just in general, we don't look at it that way down there. We look at it, they're working as a team, so he did all kinds of things. So it was, that's what we're doing. Is it's so not, it can it, work. Oh, it can work. Oh, I yeah. mean, yeah. I, I, okay, right. I, I was saying that's what I'm getting at. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm glad you. you pointed it out. That's, that's, that's where you get, that's where you that's get a bang a for your buck. Yeah, yep. he, he was, he was, and we might be having him come back um, if he doesn't have a job, but he's top-notch, smart Great. guy. All right, thank you. Great. No question. We should take more advantage of the internships out there. Yeah. Uh, interns that are looking for jobs out there. Well, particularly nowadays for so many um, <laughs> students, <laughs> having an internship either paid or unpaid is really instrumental in them being able to find a job when they graduate, unless you're in a very high-demand field. So I, I think it's, it's a win-win for everybody. Yeah. Right no more questions on this budget while we're on it. This is where uh, Chuck Holyfield is parked in this budget. I'd like to just point out that uh, Mr. Holyfield is indeed master of his universe. Um, when it comes to all things plowing, all things trucks, all things garbage pickup, all things public works crew, um, you're stellar, sir. And this, this town owes you. Is, owes you